Oh, hey everyone. I have some mail from a viewer. It says here, John, enclosed is a small amplifier board I pulled out of an old pair of speakers I purchased on eBay a few years ago. Would love to see its potential and what you think about it. And has some more information here. Here is the information about the speaker. Looks like a very small sound bar type speaker. Well, thanks Luke from Phoenix, Arizona. Certainly take a look at this. Here is the actual board. I have wire soldered onto it so I can hook it up to some speakers and try it out. Here's the bottom side of the board. See if I can get a little bit closer in on that. It says MD8403 on the chip and that is a TDA or I'm sorry a PAM8403 which is that popular 5 volt stereo class D chip. So the board includes a volume control and not much else, just uh, contact points where I soldered the wires. They're labeled, so it was pretty easy. So first, let's try it out and see if it works. Okay, so I hooked up the power source. Three AAA batteries for 4.5 volts. These 8403 chips run on anything from 2.5 to 5 volts. The more power supply voltage you give it, the more output power you get. And of course I use my music player, preamp, don't really need the preamp, but it's easier to adjust the volume with it. And I'll use some YouTube provided music so I don't get any of those copyright flags. Sounds pretty clean and clear to my ears. It does seem to lack bass. This music I have is bass heavy. So even though it does seem to have some bass, maybe through the camera, it doesn't really sound that bassy to me. And I don't know if you can hear anything, but very low hiss. Pretty good. A lot of these boards I've tested in the past class D boards that is, have quite a bit of hiss at low volume when sitting idle so pretty good these are pretty quiet little amplifiers. Now I'm not going to do a complete test because I've reviewed the 8403 board before but I do want to check its frequency response on the low end see what's going on with the bass. In order to see the waveform on the scope, I have to hook up a filter because this is a class D chip without a filter on its outputs. Because the outputs on this thing are bridged, each channel has to have two coils and two capacitors. So I have these two coils and two capacitors here. I'm only looking at one channel. I just want to see the frequency response. And I put a 4 ohm load on it so I can measure it properly with the load. I can't examine the high frequency response because I do not have the proper coils. I really need to get a set of audio grade coils of the proper value, you know, somewhere around 15, 20 micro henries and a set of caps so I can test the filterless class D amps to see what their frequency response is. But to cut to the chase, the frequency response in these things are, are going to be flat. However, this one is probably not going to be flat at low frequencies. And we'll take a look at that and I'll explain why momentarily. Okay, I'm on the scope running the 10 to 100 hertz sweep. 20 hertz right there. It's only putting out under 500 millivolts at that point. And we'll see what this grows up to 
as the frequency increases. You can see at 50 here we're almost 1 volt. There's 1 volt. Yeah, it does roll off the base. And at 70 hertz we're at 1.25. And it's still increasing. About a volt and a half at 100 hertz. At 1 kilohertz, we actually went up so high it's clipping. I'd have to back that out. So, obviously, even at 100 hertz, it did not hit the full level. Well, you might be asking, well, why the horrible low end response. Well, it actually is probably a very good engineering decision when they design this thing. You have to remember the tiny speaker this was in had drivers that I think it said it was 2.8 centimeters. You know, those are very small, about an inch. It doesn't make sense to make the amplifier play frequencies that it's that the speakers are not capable of because a couple reasons. One thing, if you crank it up and has a lot of bass in it, it's going to clip and sound terrible. It might make the tiny drivers over exert or, you know, go beyond their excursion. Now, for a tiny little board, this thing can put out a clean two and a half watts per channel, according to the data sheet. I'd have to go back and look at my video. By the way, I will link in the video where I actually reviewed the PAM 8403 board and measured its power output. So would this board be of any use? Well certainly in a smaller speaker that's not going to make a lot of bass. You could mod this board and replace the input coupling capacitors. I'm going to guess that it's probably those which is limiting the frequency response. They just chose a lower value to act as a high pass filter to block the lower frequencies out. Well there you have it, a quick look at this 8403 Class D amplifier board. The 8403 did win my best pick for a small low power amplifier if you watch my best amplifier boards video. Here's the board I actually reviewed previously. I'd like to re-review this board at some point with a proper output coil so I can you know, measure it on the oscilloscope here and see what it's frequency response is. But that'll do it on this one. Thanks for watching.